you know the gore all the fight sequences they really they're firing in all, all on all cylinders essentially and it's it's funny you know it's light-hearted way more light-hearted than you would expect and yeah. it just has that charm that james gunn brings to you know what i mean it's like mm-hmm. it's like he made this film as therapy with what he went through the traumatic you know shit that he went through with marvel and then DC, yeah. DC was like, here's all this fucking money and a big budget and just do whatever the fuck you want. And he made like a legit comic book movie that doesn't try to ground itself in realism. It, it, it embraces what, what comics really are and they're ridiculous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So. Exactly. Um, I'm, I'm glad you loved it. I actually wanted to talk to you a little bit about, a little bit about it because I, we didn't really, we haven't really spoken about it too much. I just... Uh, I think I texted you right after I saw it with uh, Jordan in, uh, but uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Because um, on, on Suicide Squad, you saw it, right? Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we watched it. Um, we watched it on HBO Max. I didn't. I didn't get to go see it in the theater. I, that's still on my list to go watch it in the, on the big screen. But yeah, it just it uh, it blew my mind, man. Um, I had a lot of fun a big standout for me was the music choices holy shit like yeah. and, and of course we know because guardians both of the guardians movies have great soundtracks but this suicide squad one was a, like a great addition to that like the music it was amazing comparing this uh, music choices from you know suicide squad this new one and comparing this one to like breaths of prey uh-huh which one do you think do I like? Yeah, the most, or the, the like, the more uh, they impressed you the most, where you're like, huh, okay, like, I don't know. Oh, I, w- I would have to say this one, um, because it it kind of covered all these different genres, like in in popular music, mm-hmm. you know, or you're starting out with with Johnny Cash, you know what I mean, and then you're ending with an obscure band like Culture Abuse, who a lot of people don't know, and that like. And I know you haven't seen the ending, and I'm not going to kill anything, but in my opinion, that was a fucking beautiful ending. Like, a beautiful song to end the movie on. You know what I mean? And James will know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah, the soundtrack was great. Um, shout out to Mondo, who's already doing the pre-orders for the vinyl oh. for Suicide Squad. So, if you're a fan out there, you're listening to this, go pick it up. Uh, go order it. Because it's a great soundtrack and a great movie. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch it on HBO Max. I know we're not in the Rex yet. I apologize. <laughs> Gushing over this. But we've been waiting a really long time for this movie. And I can't believe that it's you know finally available to watch as much as we want. Yeah, I think it's uh, the, the last day is September 5th. So uh, if you haven't seen it, you have until September 5th to watch it. Or see it in theaters. Uh, okay. If you want to take that chance. Yeah. But um, a big, a cool thing that HBO Max has been that that they've been doing lately, right, is that they'll take off the movies that are exclusive, and they'll release them on Blu-ray and release them on um, digital on demand or on demand, what however you want to say it, where you have to pay for it then, and then after a certain amount of time, they put them back on HBO Max. So all of the all the movies like that, that Denzel film, which the name escapes me, like all these films, the little little things, yeah, the little things, like all these movies that were taken off of HBO Max, they're slowly um, putting them back on the kind of within the archive of of HBO Max. So I thought that was pretty cool. Like if you're if you hang in there and wait, and you didn't get to see it in its initial run, you can still see it. Just wait a couple of months, I think like a month or two or two, two or three months and you should be able to, it should be back on there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely check it out. My, uh, I think my, I got two more pieces of news here to try to get through them really quick. Um, it looks like Scarlett Johansson uh, had sued Disney over um, Black, Widow, Black Widow streaming release. Uh, it looks like in her, um, she claims that her salary was partly based on the film's box office performance. And uh, that Marvel had actually promised her a promised her that the film would be a exclusively theatrical release and not be released on uh, Disney Plus for for twenty dollars or twenty nine dollars, whatever it is, however much it is, for you, so you can uh, buy it on Disney Plus. Um, it, and I think they're actually uh, still in the middle of that right now. I think and some news actually dropped a couple of days ago that Disney has reportedly 
cut all ties with Scarlett Johansson. I told you. <laughs> and I think tied to that, once DC heard about it, I, I heard the rumor, I don't know if it's actual what happened, but they were trying to get her to kind of like jump over to the DC and hire her to get a couple roles. I think it was a Poison Ivy, I believe. Um, and they get her in that role. Just because, you yeah, know, all, they knew... I'm all for it. They knew what it's going on, so they're like, well, if you guys are gonna not, you know, if you're not gonna treat her properly, then, you know. Just like what happened with James Gunn, the director. Yeah, just like yeah, that. DC's like, oh, what the, DC's like, we'll take the sloppy seconds, you know? <laughs> oh, man. It's all good. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, so basically they gave her just um, based on the, just basically on the theaters, right? They didn't give her the extra for, like, the releases, like, on Disney yeah, Plus from, and stuff, from, so. From what I, yeah, from what I, what I, Read, uh, she only received her uh, the partial credit for the uh, theatrical release. She doesn't receive anything for the, the digital downloads on Disney Plus. That sucks. I know a lot of people are still like feeling not safe going out there at the theaters and all that stuff. And uh, I don't know. I still feel a lot of people just used, you know, yeah, Disney Plus to to watch the movie. So, yeah, uh, it kind of it kind of sucks for her because I know um, this was her. Her last hurrah as uh, Black Widow, and I think she thought it was going to be a uh, a larger paycheck than what she got. Um, but, but for the I record, mean, for the record, she was paid twenty million dollars. Oh. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so you know, I mean, and 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 I believe the contract uh, <clears throat> was written up like pre-COVID, so it's not yeah. like you know they. Maybe they did it on purpose. Maybe they didn't. But that contract was not, bef- you know, was made before, written up before COVID. And it kind of feels like, at, as far as her image, it makes Scarlet look insensitive to what's going on. Because it's like, there's a bigger picture here. And you're worried about your cut of the profits for the Disney Plus thing. You know what I mean? But at the same time, yeah. at the same time, it's like... Disney could have just settled out of court and been like, "Hey, sorry for the miscommunication. You know, miscommunication. Here you go. Like, we we apologize." But then, I think I think that's where they're at right now. I think they're still trying to settle something outside of court, um, going through arbitration or something like that. But um, as of right now, it looks like Disney's done with her and uh, her with Disney as well. So I think. Uh, the possibility of her going over the, or to the the dark side or to DC, if you will, um, is looks very real at the moment. Um, I don't know if she wants to step away from those kind of roles and kind of work on her more serious stuff. Right. Uh, but uh, I don't. Either way, I think um, I don't know, pay her. I guess if she's, if she's if she's owed money, pay her. If not, then you know, move move along. But. Uh, moving on to my last bit of news, it looks like, I know I talked about this a little while ago, uh, HBO Max is starting a uh, Blue Beetle movie for, uh, for HBO Max, and uh, the uh, the star from Cobra Kai, I don't know how to pronounce his name, It's is it Cholo or Zolo? It's X-O-L-O. Cholo? Cholo, yeah, um, and I can't even pronounce his last name, so I'm not even going to attempt to do it. But uh, he's the main kid from uh, from Cobra Kai. If you've seen it, you know who I'm talking about. Um, he looks like he's uh, basically finishing his uh, contract to, or he's starting a contract with uh, HBO Max to play Blue Beetle. Uh, Jamie Reyes uh, is the character's name in the in the comic books. So I'm pretty excited for that. I know there's not too much representation for Latino. Uh, superheroes or Latino people in the superhero world uh, so that's a step up for them uh, so I'm excited to see see hopefully it, hopefully it's good yeah um, yeah I, I love him like in Cobra Kai he's awesome and then his uh, full yeah. name is uh, Romario Cholo Maridueña uh, that yeah, X is like a, it sounds like a CH and well, I don't know yeah like a CH kind of so uh, Cholo Maridueña um yeah, he's. I don't know. I, I love him in, in in Cobra Kai. He does a great job. Yeah. So I'm actually pretty excited for that. Um, I kind of forgot about uh, what's the what's the name of the uh, hero? Like Beetle, Blue, Blue, Blue Beetle. Beetle. Blue Beetle. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't. I I kind of forgot that he kind of existed. So when I when I read that, I was like, oh my, like, dude. Like I didn't even think of that. You know. 
So I don't know, it, it got me by surprise for sure, and it's definitely something I'm, I'm looking forward to. Um, yeah, very much. Do you guys think that him signing on for such a pivotal role like Blue Beetle, does that mean that we could be seeing the end of Cobra Kai in the future? Or maybe the end of Miguel's character? You know what I mean? Like, um, I don't. That's a good question. I, I, I think if they time it right, um, he's. I mean, I think if they time it right, the schedules will line up where he can do both, um, probably one after the other. I know they. There's. Didn't they just finish filming season three? Uh, I think it's season four is coming out in November season already. Four. Yeah, season four yeah. is already filmed and ready. It's coming out like um, in the winter already. Nice. Yeah, I know Blue Beetle's not scheduled to come out, I think, until 2022 or uh, late 2022, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but maybe yeah, the- I mean, if they can work around it, I mean, I'm sure I mean, sure they can figure out a way to do it. I, I don't think you would want to step away from from that role on uh, Cobra Kai if it's not necessary. I mean, uh, you know, it, the, su- the success of that Blue Beetle movie on HBO Max is not guaranteed. Some people, I mean, it might be, people might hate it. And, uh, he, you know, I don't know. I hope you can do both. That's true. Um, yeah. But that, that's uh, my last bit of news. Okay. Great. Um, I have a few pieces if you guys want to hear them. Did you want to go first, Yael? No, no, go ahead. I, I basically was going to say um, about Blue Beetle. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's definitely one, one I wanted to touch we on. We beat you to it. Really. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. All right. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> Yeah, you actually do that every time I'm in here, right? so I don't know if it's personal or... I don't know how to feel anymore, man. It's with, it's with everybody. It's, right. yeah. it's not just you. All right, that makes it's because he's the news guy. Man. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's your section, man. you got to make sure you're covering your bases. All right, uh, my first piece, um, as we said at the top of the show, happy Friday the 13th. Um, I guess we had Don't Breathe Drop this weekend, Don't Breathe uh, 2, the film. Uh, and overall, it seems critics are seeing the film as problematic so far with Stephen Lang's blind uh, blind man character becoming the hero in the sequel, which is something uh, we actually discussed um, when the trailer dropped a few months ago. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it really is kind of going down that rabbit hole of forget the first film. Uh, it's, time, it's time to like this guy now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was so bizarre because it's still. He, he was only he was only he only kidnapped the lady and was gonna inseminate her pregnant with yeah. a tur- turkey baster or whatever like really <laughs> oh my God. weird shit. Oh yeah. So I I don't know. Right now I looked up that movie because I didn't ring a bell, uh-huh. but I I remember I, I I vaguely remember watching. I definitely remember that part because uh-huh. I was like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> like how did this shit happen? I don't know. I I don't know, but. I didn't even know there was a second part coming. Yeah. Um, as yeah. an addition, you know, like a sequel. Or it whatever. was kind of a surprise. Like, we knew, everybody knew that it was being made, and then we forgot because there was, like, no news on it. And then all of a sudden, they're like, here's this trailer, and it's coming out in August. Hmm. Yeah. And we're just like... It happened so fast. Um, we talked, so we talked about Venom moving on. Um, I did want to, my last piece of news, it's a kind of sad, but also um necessary to bring up as a celebration kind of but so this week the death anniversary of one of the best comedians to ever live mr robin williams uh seven years after the actor's death his oldest son zach williams honored his late father with a touching twitter post and it read Dad, seven years ago, today you passed on. The joy and inspiration you brought to the world carries on in your legacy and in your family, friends, and fans you so loved. You live to bring laughter and to help others. I will be celebrating your memory today. Love you forever. Zach is now the CEO of the Prepare Your Mind Wellness Company, which was um, created after Robin's death, uh, specifically to help people um with mental health issues which is a a beautiful thing you know it is it's needed big time especially right now these crazy times you know 
So shout out and RIP to Robin Williams, of course. Oh, yes. The GOAT. 